Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Wednesday to our ESPNR paras in Polk County Public Schools. This is your union president, Stephanie Yoakum, here with a 10-minute meeting for support staff contract updates. So I have our chart today, and we're going to go through about where we've been, where we are, and where you want to go with your proposals across the table right now. But first, to continue this work, we are currently bargaining. And so as we get bargaining dates, you know, we're currently working with the district to get more bargaining dates. We're looking in the next couple of weeks. We're going to need you guys to stand up and show up to support these proposals as we're looking at, and we've proposed a three-year salary deal to start breaking up the compression that we've seen with the move to $15 an hour. The second thing is, is if you're not a member yet, we need you to join. We are stronger together when we are advocating for proposals, for working conditions, we are stronger together. And with certification at 60% looming over us now, we must maintain our contracts through your membership. So let's talk about where we've been, where we are, and where we wanna go through your proposals that are across the table right now. So where we've been in the 2021 school year, we went to impasse with the district over a level increase and the board voted 4-3 against you, against us as a union. So salaries were frozen in the 2021 school year for support staff. And at that time, our ESP lowest hourly rate was $8.57 an hour. Our lowest para hourly rate was $9.13 an hour. In the 21-22 school year, we had the state constitutional amendment to start rolling minimum wage up to $15 an hour. So we had to be at a minimum $11 an hour. But over the next two years, and then with the subsequent move to $15 an hour, that created significant compression in our support staff pay grades. It actually created more compression than what we saw in the teacher contracts. So we're gonna have to now work to fix that. But this is where we've been. We went from 857, 913 to 11 to 15. So we're here. Your proposal says that we want to keep the minimum at at least 15. So the starting salary, hourly rates, and our pay grades, we want to keep the same because we have to use the money based on what you guys have said to us, that compression has to be addressed, that veteran support staff have to start seeing the monies that our newer support staff have seen over the last couple of years. And so we want to keep the minimums at the same as what there are in each pay grade. Now, when I talk about and I go through, I'm going to talk about in generalities and averages because we have about 24 pay grades between the two contracts and each pay grade is, is different. And, and so you're going to need to look at one, once we have tentative agreements and once we have, you know, these proposals on paper uh, for tentative agreements to look at, you're going to need to look at what your pay level is, where your pay grade is, and so that you can see what exactly you would be making. Because it's going to be different for these next couple of years as we break up the compression. Because we can't just do flat raises for everybody, either in percents or dollar amounts, because that won't address the compression. We have to start putting the money toward our veteran staff so that they can start to realize the money that our newer support staff have seen over the last couple of years. So what we are proposing through your proposals across the table this year is for our the base to stay the same where they're at right now. And then that's for zero years of experience. Now, some of our support staff contracts have zero to 21 years of experience collapsed in the first pay level. And so it's actually gonna take longer past the 25, 26 school year to completely break it up because it's so egregious in the support staff contracts. But this three-year deal of where we wanna go through your union really does address a good majority of, of the compression. And so creating uniform pay schedules in both contracts is a priority because right now we have pay level, we have pay grades that are 12 levels, that are 20 levels, that are four or five levels. And so as you are moving pay grades or getting job promotions or moving into ESP para contracts, we want clear, concise, easy to read pay schedules. And so your proposal has every pay grade going from level A, the first level, to level M, the last level, to make sure that that clear, consistent pay grades are through across through each contract. And we've worked to make sure that like 
between school-based secretary to financial registrar to principal secretary, that there are good, and those are just an example. And we, we did this throughout both contracts. But just as an example, that it, as you move up and, and get jobs in different pay grades, that you know that you're getting, just by moving uh, pay grades, that you're getting a raise associated with that pay grade move. And so that was really important from what we have heard from you guys and to your bargaining team for your proposal across the table. We, uh, and like I just said, we adjusted pay labels to ensure equitable moves so that you are getting raises as you move pay grades and move up. And so what we're looking at for experienced staff, and again, th these are averages. Some people are getting a little bit more, some people are getting a little bit less, but you're looking on average about $1.75 per hour increase this year. And again, you're going to need to look at your specific pay grades just because there's so many of them. And then in the next year, we are looking at a 1.5% uh, added into each pay level, 4% at the top, with moving down even further. So let me, let me go back a little bit. And this year, we're also looking at moving you down the schedules to break up that compression. So most of you guys are going to see two to three level moves this year. Next year, you're looking at three to four level moves, depending on where you're at in, uh, in the pay grade. With our newer teachers maybe seeing one or two, or, or sorry, newer support staff, sorry. Our newer support staff seeing one or two moves. And in the 25-26 school year, you know, you're going to see, again, if you're veteran support staff, another two or three level moves, depending on where you are and what pay grade you're in. With our newer staff, you know, maybe seeing a level. And so another thing I want to highlight here is that in the 24, 25, and the 25, 26, we don't have those state budgets yet. So we kept that in mind so that we were conservative with the moves because we always know that once we get the state budget, once we cost out what this minimally would be, we can always come back to speed up the decompression and, and make us move faster to break that up and or add money into your levels as well so that you can see and realize that money faster as we get what those state budgets are. So in the next, this year we know exactly what we have. So this is pretty, pretty fine, uh, pretty static right now. You know, we are going back and forth to the district, uh, but we think that this structure is, is pretty sound. It would be the next two years where we would have more money that we would come back to the table because we're not going to leave any money on the table for you guys. And then in the 25-26, we would be proposing to add 3% into the pay levels, 4% at the top, which again is about a dollar per hour on average. Some might be more, some might be a little less depending on your pay grade. What we've also been able to do for support staff, and we haven't signed off on this yet, but the district and your union are in agreement. Uh, we're working on some of the language pieces in those uh, sections. That's why they're not signed off on yet. But we have agreed to move longevity from $37 a month. So if you're 15 years uh, in five-year increments after 15, from $37 a month to $45 a month. And so depending on where you're at too, that's about a percent increase to your base pay um, overall salary in addition to what we would see in the compression, uh, decompression models. And so that affects our people that have been here for 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, some even 40 years with our district. And so you would see that move in longevity. And so kind of where we've been, where we're going, where we're at now. So we've had to move the base quite significantly over the last three years, two years. And so what we're looking at total for between 2020 to 2026, you can see that we're getting closer to closing that gap where our newer support staff have seen about, you know, seven and a half dollars on average. And then our veteran staff by the end of this would see almost five dollars. And then with one more year, we would be able to almost completely break up that compression. But this would get us through our term of our contract now. So again, your union through your proposals is how we do this. And us standing together side by side so that we advocate not only for our professions and what we need, you know, we're advocating for the schools that we love and the kids that we serve every day. And this is how we 
start to fix the injustices that have happened to our veteran support staff as we've moved the minimum to $15 an hour. And so again, I, please join. We are needed to be stronger together side by side as we continue this work. So we love you guys and we'll let you know when more bargaining dates come out and we're asking for you guys to come after your duty day to see and to stand behind your bargaining team as we continue to advocate for not only your salaries, but for your working conditions and for our kids. Thank you guys so much and have a great, happy Red Fred Wednesday.